Hi everyone, this is Mrs. G.A. And today we're going to start learning how to graph rational functions. Um, so we're going to start by graphing what's called the parent function for our rational function family. And the parent function looks like this. f of x equals 1 over x. So you can see that we're graphing uh, functions that look like fractions. So to do this, let's start by making a t-chart. So you can see here we have some positive x values to plug in and some negative x values to plug in. And we'll plot our points to see what it looks like. Um, so let's start here with x equals 1 fourth. So if I have 1 over 1 fourth, let me zoom out a little. So 1 over 1 fourth. Remember when you're dividing by a fraction, it's actually multiplying by the reciprocal. So one divided by one fourth is actually four. So that means one over one third is three. One over one half is two. One over one is one. And one over two is one half. And then we can do the same thing for the negative values. This would just be negative four, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1 half. All right, so let's plot these coordinates. Um, so here, of course, we're going to need to estimate a little bit um, for the fractions, but that's okay. Uh, so if we have 1 fourth 4, that would be somewhere around here, roughly. And then 1 third 3. So maybe around here, and then one half, two, one, one, and two, one half. So we actually get a portion of our graph that looks like this. And then let's graph um, the right side of our table. So we have negative one fourth, negative four, negative one third, negative three, negative one half, negative two, negative one, negative one, and negative two, negative one half. So on this side, we get something that looks like this. So you can see here, um, as our x value, as our positive x values get closer and closer to zero, um, our graph just shoots up really, really, really quickly. And then as our positive x values get larger, our graph um, approaches that x-axis. So it kind of curves along your two axes like this, and then the same for the negative values. So rational functions have what are called asymptotes. So asymptotes are lines that your graph will approach and travel along as you reach different values. So, so by looking at our graph and kind of the different axes or the lines that they're approaching, you can see that we have a horizontal asymptote here, which happens to be at y equals zero. And we also have a vertical asymptote here at x equals zero. So again, these are both lines that your graph is going to get really, really close to. Um, but in this case, it's never actually going to quite touch them. If you think about y, well, let's look at this line x equals 0. What happens if we plug in x equals 0 into our function? So I'll do, let's test f of 0. We get 1 over 0. So hopefully we remember a really important rule that we cannot... Um, divide by zero, your denominator can never be zero. So that's why we have one asymptote here. And then the reason why we'll never hit y equals zero is, well, if you're taking one and you're dividing it by a number, whether it's positive or negative, one divided by any number will never be zero. Um, you can divide and you can get a really, really tiny number. You can get something that's super close to zero, or you can divide and you can get a really, really big number. Um, but it will never hit zero. So that's why we have these two asymptotes. So now that we know what the parent function uh, looks like for our rational function, uh, we can graph some transformed versions of our 
function. So today we're going to be working with um, shifts. So shifts uh, left, right, up, or down. We'll do some vertical stretches and we'll even do some uh, reflections. So here's kind of the standard form we're going to be looking for. f of x equals a over x minus h plus k. So um, hopefully these letters look familiar, the A, the H, and the K, um, because these are transformations that uh, we've worked with earlier this year, and they follow the same rules that we learned earlier this year. So hopefully you remember that anytime we're multiplying our function by some value A, and so instead of 1, it's A, this creates, I'll make a note down here, a vertical stretch or shrink. And if it, that value is negative, remember multiplying by a negative causes a reflection. Okay, the next change you might see is here. Anytime we add or subtract from x, again, now we're adding or subtracting, that's going to be a horizontal translation, which again is a shift. So this is going to shift our graph left or right. We do have to remember that due to that negative that's built into the formula, it actually moves in the opposite direction that we think. And then if we add or subtract from our entire function, so notice this k is not specifically grouped with the x, this is a vertical translation, which again is a shift. So it's going to shift our graph um, up or down. Um, so we're going to be looking for these different types of transformations today. Um, we can also kind of generalize these rules or these transformations into rules for your asymptotes. Um, so our vertical asymptote is always going to be at x equals h um, because our vertical asymptote is going to shift left or right just like the rest of our graph. And our horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals k. Um, because again, our horizontal asymptote will shift up or down uh, with the rest of our graph. So we can start by identifying our two asymptotes and we can sketch them in kind of as guidelines. And then uh, we can plot a, at least one point on each side of our vertical asymptote um, just to determine where our graph falls and to get a a little bit more of an accurate graph. And of course, the more um, points we plot, um, the more accurate our graph will be. All right, um, let's start with this first example together. So here, looking at this function, f of x equals one over x plus two. In terms of transformations, this graph is just simply shifting to the left Two. Remember, anything added or subtracted from x um, shifts left or right. So this actually shifts left two. Um, so since our graph shifts left two, instead of having a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, we're going to have one at x equals negative two. And again, it's always going to be at x equals h. Here, our h value is negative two. It's opposite. So that's where our vertical asymptote will be. And then here, um, our horizontal asymptote is actually going to be the same as our parent function because we're not shifting our graph up or down. So there's no um, vertical shift, so it stays at y equals 0. So here's kind of our guideline. Um, so now we need a couple points to help us determine whether our graph is going to be here and here or maybe here and here. Um, they're always going to be opposite um, each other for the graphs that we're going to be working with. Um, so again, we just want a couple points to help verify where a graph will fall. Now, when I am picking x values, um, I am going to pick strategically to make it easier to simplify. So maybe one value that would make it easy to simplify would be f of negative 1. So if we substitute this x value into our function, we get 1 over negative 1 plus 2, so f of negative 1 is 1 over 1, which is just 1. So again, by, by being strategic with the x values you pick, you can 
um, get nicer numbers, especially in your denominator. So let's plot that point. We have negative 1, 1. So there's one point. And I'll write that point here. Um, we could really easily find another one. Maybe it's nice to find where um, our y-intercept is. So remember, our y-intercept occurs um, when x is 0. So f of 0 would be 1 over 0 plus 2. So 1 half. So like this. So this part of our graph is going to look like this. This remember it's always going to travel along your asymptotes it will never quite um, touch them but it will get really really close and then let's pick an x value to the um, left of our vertical asymptote so maybe a nice one to simplify would be f of negative 3 let's find f of negative 3 so 1 over negative 3 plus 2 gives us 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. So we have another point over here, negative 3, negative 1. And here we'll just kind of sketch in what we know our graph to look like. So that's why it's really valuable to know what the parent function looks like. These graphs are always going to make that general shape where it looks kind of like a kind of a parabola on one side and then a parabola on the other side that are always opposite each other. So um, now that we have our nice graph, we have some points on both sides of our vertical asymptotes. Um, we're also going to practice listing the domain and range. So a quick reminder, um, our domain is all of the x values that work for our function and the range is all of the y values that work for our function. So our domain is always going to be all real numbers except for our vertical asymptote because our graph will never quite reach this. So our domain here is essentially everything except for negative 2. Let's practice writing this um, in interval notation. So for interval notation, remember we always start with our lower boundary. So since our graph is going to go to the left forever, our lower boundary is negative infinity, which always goes with the parentheses. And then we're going to reach our first upper boundary. So we actually have a boundary here at negative 2, which is not included because our graph will never touch that vertical asymptote. But then we also have more graph on the right side of that vertical asymptote. So we can do this little U shape, um, or you could do a comma. Either way is fine. And then we'll start back at negative 2. And then our graph is going to keep going to the right forever, so the upper boundary is positive, positive infinity. So this is essentially saying everything from negative infinity to negative 2, not including negative 2, and then everything from negative 2 to positive infinity. So it's just a way of saying everything, all real numbers except for negative 2. So let's see if we can do the same for our range, for our y values. So our lower boundary is negative infinity again. And then it's going to keep going until we hit zero. So we have that asymptote. So it's kind of like um, our stopping point. And again, it's not included. So we use a parenthesis. But then it picks back up because then we have values, everything bigger than zero. So zero to positive infinity. So that's how we can write the domain and range for these types of functions. It's always, or most of the time, it's going to be everything except for our asymptotes, especially for the graphs that we'll be working with this year. All right, so let's try another one together. <clears throat> so here we have f of x equals negative 2 over x plus 3. So here we do see a negative, so maybe we can um, expect some type of reflection. We see a vertical stretch by 2. Here, uh, we don't see any horizontal shift because we're not adding or subtracting from x, but we do see a vertical shift, so we're going to go up 3. So here, since um, our h value is 0, our vertical asymptote is going to be x equals 0. So again, there's no shift left or right, so it's going to stay exactly where it was for the parent function at x equals 0. Our horizontal asymptote, remember, is always going to be y equals k whatever that k value is, and in this case it's 3. 
So you can see, since it's at y equals 3, this shows that our graph has been shifted up 3, because usually for the parent function, it starts at 0. So it's been shifted up 3. All right, so now that we have our asymptotes, we're going to plot some points on either side of our vertical asymptote. So um, let's pick a couple to the right of 0. So let's start with maybe f of 1. So it's negative 2 over 1 plus 3. So f of 1 is 1. So that gives us the point 1, 1, so right here. And just for practice, let's do one more to the right. Let's do f of 2, because that's pretty easy to simplify here, because we have negative 2 over 2 plus 3. So f of 2 equals 2. So we can see in this case, um, this portion of our graph is actually below our horizontal asymptote. Um, now let's find a couple um, x values to the left of our vertical asymptote. So maybe we could do f of negative 1. So negative 2 over negative 1 gives us positive 2 plus 3. So f of negative 1 is 5. So we have negative 1, 5. And just to be thorough, let's do one more. So let's do f of negative 2. So it's negative 2 divided by negative 2, which is positive 1. And then plus 3 gives us 4. So we have negative 2, 4. So you can see we have a graph that looks like this. So you can see that our, the two portions of our graph are still in opposite quadrants. But because of that reflection, instead of being up here and here, you can see now that it's been reflected into the other two quadrants. Um, so now that we have our graph, let's list the domain and range. So remember, our domain for these is going to be all real numbers except for this vertical asymptote because it will never hit x equals 0. So that would be negative infinity to 0. 0 is not included and then 0 to positive infinity. So it's kind of a roundabout way of excluding 0. And then for our vertical, or for our, our range, it's going to be everything except for our horizontal asymptote. So it's going to be everything except for y equals 3. So negative infinity to 3, and then 3 to positive infinity. And there you have it. All right, let's try another one together. Um, so here we have f of x equals 1 over x minus 3 minus 1. So here we actually have two shifts. We can see that our shift, uh, we have a shift to the right 3 and then down 1. So this is h and this is k. So for a vertical asymptote, it's x equals positive 3. Remember for h, it's always opposite. And then y equals k, which is negative 1. So you can see that our graph does shift to the right 3 and down 1 from our parent function. All right, so let's pick some points on either side. Let's start with f of 4. So we have a point to the right. So that gives us 1 over 4 minus 3 and then minus 1. So this is 1 over 1, which is 1, and then minus 1 is 0. So we have the point 4, 0. So right here. So just based on where this point is, we can infer that our graph is going to look something like this. Again, it's a pretty rough sketch, but we know that it will be in this quadrant because we have one point there and it's going to travel along our asymptotes. And then um, let's pick a point to the left. So let's do f of 2. So 1 over 2 minus 3 minus 1. So this gives us negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. 
negative 2, negative 2, right here. So our graph is going to look something like this. All right, so now that we have our graph, let's do the domain and range. So our domain is going to be all real numbers except for 3. So our domain is negative infinity to 3 and then 3 to positive infinity. And then our uh, range, the y values that work, you can see is going to be everything except for negative 1, wherever we have that asymptote. So negative infinity to negative 1 and then negative 1 to positive infinity. All right, let's try one more together. Um, so here we have f of x equals negative 3 over x plus 1 plus 2. So here we can expect a reflection, a vertical stretch by 3. This will shift our graph left 1 and then up 2. So our vertical asymptote will be at x equals negative 1. Remember, it was opposite of what we see here. And our horizontal asymptote will be at y equals 2, whatever number we see here. So let's start with those. Um, here's x equals negative 1, our vertical asymptote, and y equals 2. And then we can pick um, a point to the right and left. So let's do, how about f of 0, because that's to the right of our vertical asymptote. So it gives us negative 3 over 0 plus 1 plus 2. So negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So we have 0, negative 1. And just for practice, let's pick one more number. Um, an easy number to simplify here would be x equals 2. And you'll see why in just a second. If we strategically pick x equals 2, we get negative 3 over 2 plus 1 plus 2. So this gives us negative 3 over 3 which is um, negative 1, and then negative 1 plus 2 is 1. So f of 2 is 1. So again, you can pick whatever x values you want, but there are certainly some x values that make your fraction easier to simplify than others. So we can see this portion of our graph will hit those two points, and again, we'll always travel along our asymptotes like this. Um, and then let's do... Um, some points to the left. So let's do um, f of negative 2. So we'll have negative 3 over negative 2 plus 1 plus 2. So this becomes negative 3 over negative 1, which is positive 3 plus 2 is 5. So we have the point negative 2, 5. And for practice, let's do one more point. Let's do f of negative 4. And again, I picked negative 4 for a reason. So we have negative 3 over negative 4 plus 1 plus 2. So if we strategically pick um, x equals negative 4, this becomes negative 3 over negative 3, which is positive 1, and then plus 2 is 3. So f of negative 4 is 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. And then our graph will look like this. So you can see again, because we have that negative causing the reflection, instead of having our graph upper right and lower left, now it's lower right and upper left, so it's been reflected. Um, and then let's take a moment and do the domain and range. So again, if you kind of travel across um, your x-axis, it's going to be everything except for where you have an asymptote. So everything except for negative 1. So negative infinity to negative 1 and then negative 1 to infinity. And for your range, if you travel along your y-axis, it's going to be everything except for 2, where you have that horizontal asymptote. So again, negative infinity to 2, and then 2 to positive infinity. 
All right, so at this point, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and give this one a try on your own. And whenever you're ready to check your answers, um, just hit play. All right, go ahead and check your work. Um, so you can see here we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2 and a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2, which shifts our graph to the right 2 and up 2. Um, and then if you um, find a couple points to the right or left, some nice points to use would be f of 3, which is 1, and then f of 1, which is 3. So you can see those points here and here. So once you have a point in a quadrant, you kind of know what your graph is going to look like. Um, but we just want to double check. We want one, always at least one on both sides of our vertical asymptote. But we know that our graph is always going to follow along those asymptotes, so we can kind of do a sketch from there. And then here you have our domain and range. So our domain is everything except for 2, and our range is also everything except for 2. All right, here's the last example for today's video. So again, please um, pause the video to try it on your own, and we'll check your answers in just a few seconds. All right, so go ahead and check. Um, looking at your graph, we can expect our graph to shift to the left three and down three. So our vertical asymptote is at x equals negative three, and our horizontal asymptote is at y equals uh, negative three. And here I found two points on either side, but um, as long as you have at least one on each side, that's fine. And you should have a graph in this upper right uh, quadrant and then this lower left quadrant. And then our domain is everything except for negative three, and our range is everything except for negative three. All right, um, that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching.